These days, it's easy to be triggered. Ah, uh, easy for automation, that is. What did you think I was talking about? Triggers are the starting point for every automation. Does the automation need to start when a ticket is created? Does it need to run every day at 4 a.m.? Maybe a form needs to be filled out. And while there are many that we could cover coming from your integrations, we're gonna take a look at some of those core roost triggers that are most often used in your automation. So let's jump right in here into the platform. I am in the workflow canvas. I've created a new workflow. So if I come up here to the very top, there is a little lightning bolt and this is where you add your triggers. So I can click on this here and you're basically just gonna set up your new trigger here with a name. You will need to enable it when you are ready and then here you will choose your trigger type. Now again, if I open this up, there are a lot of different trigger types that I can look at here that come from your different integrations and they're all pretty self-explanatory. Things like in ConnectWise here, I can see invoice record saved, opportunity record saved, etc. So if you need that kind of action to kick off an automation, awesome, go ahead and set that up here. So I'm gonna start with the most common and that is form submission. You'll see this in all of our CluckU content. You'll see this in other examples as well. This is simply setting up a trigger from a form. So first you need to create a form, then you can connect it to the workflow via this trigger. What that does is whenever someone fills out the form and clicks submit, the automation begins. Whatever data comes in from that form enters your automation and you can do something with that information. To see a great example of this in the works, go check out the Roost 100 series if you haven't already. Next, we have our time-based triggers. So we have the time interval trigger and the cron job trigger, or as I like to call it, the cron trigger. If I click on time interval here, this is a trigger that you can set up if you need your automation to run repeatedly. So here you could set up things like every five minutes, every hour, daily, weekly, etc. And you'll see that here with interval and unit. Here you can choose the units, minutes, hours, days, weeks, and then interval, you can go ahead and just place your number here. And then we have our cron trigger. This is where we can get a bit more specific. So if we want a specific time, let's say at 4 a.m. every Monday or 9 p.m. every Monday or something along those lines, you can do that with a cron trigger. So first we have the time zone here set to UTC by default, but you can change this. And then for your cron schedule, there is a specific syntax for getting this to be what you want. So basically the way this works is there are five spots here. So I'll just do this. What this would represent is just every minute. On the left, you have minute and then hour and then day of the month and then month and then day of the week. So here, for example, if I wanted to say 12 a.m. every Friday, I could simply change this to 00. That's gonna represent 12 a.m. for me. And then I'm gonna come over here and I can actually add in Friday. There's a lot of information on this online. This is a bit confusing for you, but the idea for a cron job is simply that you can be very specific about the time that your automation runs. Next, we have always pass. Now, always pass is usually applied to integration overrides, specifically in the case of using options generators. And if you're curious about options generators, we talk more about those in another video. So check that one out. And finally, we have webhook triggers. Now, webhook triggers in short, essentially allow you to trigger an automation based on an action in really any platform that allows you to use webhooks. We'll get more into webhook triggers in our next video, but a good example of this would be something like if I wanted to get information from, let's say, Canny. Canny is a feedback platform that we use to take in requests or feedback for our product, for our documentation, etc. And because it supports webhooks, we could put in the information, particularly this secret key down here, and have that trigger an automation when something very specific happens. But that's what we have here for our core triggers. So to summarize, triggers start our workflows with a form submission, with time-based triggers, we can use always pass for special workflows like options generators, and we have our webhook triggers. You may be wondering about that core app platform. We'll come back to that one later on. So that's gonna do it here for our overview of triggers. For more examples of using triggers as you're building automations, check out our Roost 100 series. Otherwise, again, if you have questions about options generators, you can check out our option generator video as well. Let us know in the comments if you have any other questions or topics that you'd like to see us cover. And again, we'll see you in the next one.